here we are, about to sail across the Pacific Ocean. And if you haven't looked at a globe recently, check one out. There's a whole lot of blue between the Galapagos and French Polynesia. Preparing for a trip like this isn't easy. To do it safely, we'll need the right amount of food and fuel and a whole lot of planning to pull it off. Sailing the coastline or staying in one area is far easier. But the reason we do these big ocean crossings is the reward at the end. And to be honest, the sense of pride and satisfaction of doing something difficult that not everyone does. But the real reward here will be to spend time in places like the Marquesas or the Tuamotus with our kids. Places that are not always easy to get to, but definitely worth the effort it takes to get there. Okay, so just quickly video. We're at the farmer's market. Yes. Did you get everything you needed? I uh, know. Okay. <laughs> I got two watermelons. We got... You know, watermelons, We're considering bananas. This chicken as you a can pet. buy, yeah, you can buy a What's chicken. Hey, hey? What's the pet in, uh, you can buy hey hey. Maybe if you feed him enough of the corn by the end of the trip, he'll you could eat him. I think he looks smarter than hey. But uh, yeah, you can get not a lot here in Isabella. You can get melons, bananas, chilies. Chilies are good. Limes, papaya, pineapples. Are we taking off? Yeah. Should we say goodbye to the penguins one more time? Yeah. Yeah. It was a blast. It was a great trip. And now Marquesas, two and a half weeks. What do we have? In here we have our laundry. We have ice and uh, watermelons. We have bread. We should not hit this boat. We have a hammock. We have uh, fruits and vegetables, papayas. Anyway, what a trip. Woo! Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye, blue-footed boobies. Bye, penguins. Bye forever. Seven. How cool are the Galapagos guys? This might be might be our best stop ever. What do you think? Yeah. I yeah. This is pretty hard to beat. Look at this. Here she's coming over to say hi. He's coming right over. Look at that penguin. Here she swam right over. All right, let's go back to our boat, huh? Here goes our buddy boat, Vega. Picking up anchor. We're all leaving right now. Bon voyage, Vega! Okay, we are on our way. Just leaving Isabella Galapagos. How many days do you think it's gonna take us? Hail. 20. Oh, no way, that was last time. Reese. 18, that's better. Pierce? 19. No, okay, it's still better than last time. You? 16. I think 17 is my guess. We'll see who's right. And we're ready. We got uh, fuel, full, full on fuel. We've got a bunch of jerry cans. Not quite like last time where we had them kind of sketchily rigged to the back. Uh, we only have six here on the deck, so three here, three over there. We've got our uh, Code D Reacher sail rigged. Jenna's ready, Maine's ready to hoist. A little bit of a lumpy sea, but uh, we are ready. Boat's clean. Can we turn on your new audio war story? Yes, whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> Keep those kids happy. I'm excited. This is uh, it's 10 years ago we did this, and it was a challenge. Hopefully we get better weather this time, not as much rain, and uh, we have, you know, what we had the last part of the last trip was beautiful downwind sailing. Hopefully that's what we have again. We'll see. I'm pretty certain this is how the last passage across the Pacific started. <laughs> With Elizabeth. Elizabeth sleeping. But now there's this new guy. Oh, uh, waking up. And Tim and I were out here hanging out. Now I've got Hale and Reese. And we're just leaving Isabella behind. about normal here. You're awake. <laughs> yeah. So zoom out, how much further do we have to go? Are we almost there? Uh, we're almost there, really. Okay. Zoom out, okay. Look. So yeah, keep going. I don't know where it so is. So there's our first waypoint. There's our second waypoint. There's our third waypoint. Keep going. If we got any further. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got a ways to go. Yeah, there you go. That's where we're going. 
Four hours in. I feel like we're. I feel like we're five. <laughs> I feel like we're five hours in. Okay, so we're not even. We're not even out of sight of land yet, and stuff is breaking. Hey guys, our refrigerator is not very cold. while we're fixing the fridge, the sunset's happening. It's a beauty, look at that thing. And then, this is it. There's Isabella, right there. That will be absolutely it. After this sun goes down, we will not see land again for a very long time. So here is night one. Super beautiful. Unfortunately, only five knots of wind, so we're not we're not sailing with anything, but that means we can set up a projector, watch a little movie with dinner. Pretty cozy, protected. Tonight we're watching Avatar. Sail up. Hey. That's not a good thing. We screwed up. We uh, were cruising along at eight knots and then the gut wind went to 20 with the code D up. The hourglass uh, got snagged and then it started to unravel again. And uh, it just the wind just was too heavy, it put a rip right in the sail. So this is our this is our go-to sail downwind. It's not even day one and we've ripped it. So I've got some tape, sail tape. We'll try and tape that little hole, wait for a calm day if we get one, and try and rewrap this, and hopefully we can use it again. We have a backup spinnaker, a symmetrical, but it's not as fast as this one. So if the goal is to cross the ocean fast, we just didn't do ourselves any favors. I'm not really sure how to exactly do this, but I'm glad we have this tape. Do that on both sides. Hope that holds. It's not much more, I don't think we can really do. So now the problem is how do we get back up and furl? So we're gonna wait, I think, for a light wind day before we use it again. Okay, by the way, this is uh, starting day two. I didn't shave yesterday. I'm not gonna shave the whole trip. And uh, let's see in the end what my beard looks like. So it's night two. And I've pulled our waypoint from here over a little bit this way so that we're not so close hauled. And on about 60 degrees, we move. So we just saw 12.2, we're kind of holding at 10 and a half, 10.3 sustained knots, 10 and a half, 10, seven. So we are just flying along right now. Uh, and it's pretty comfortable, um, even though we're going upwind at 10 and a half knots. But uh, what time is it? It is... 5.25 in the morning. Oh, so we're just kind of cruising along. All of a sudden the wind has picked up from 18 to 20, there we go, 23 apparent, 24 knots. It's quite a lot of wind out there. But uh, it doesn't seem too crazy. People are still sleeping. Night two is almost in the books. Pretty interesting, it was kind of cloudy and rainy where we were. Now it looks like we kind of hit that, that front where it just turns into a nice sunny blue day. So we've been kind of sailing south, southwest toward our waypoint, but really south to try to get toward clear air. And it looks like we've kind of arrived a little bit earlier than thought. Okay, how stupid is this? What? The screw fell out of the top here. It just unscrewed and fell into the pole, 
And so now the chair, nothing's holding the chair up. So I have no nav table on day three of a three week passage. I think I understand. I think they welded a screw in to this plate and the weld broke. Still not a great design. So the nav table's gone. It's only day three. Now I get to do the rest of the trip like this. And it's annoying. So we got a nice break between the storms. So we're using this time kind of smart. We're all taking a shower, which is nice to do first one in three days. Uh, we're, I just did an inspection of the boat, kind of walked around the boat and looked for chafe. The only other chafe I found, which actually looks really bad, is the outhaul. So the outhaul right here routes through this block, which I don't think is tight enough, because it rubs on this part of the boom. So you can see the outhaul looks really chafed bad. So I'm gonna have to tighten this up somehow and then uh, replace that line as soon as I can. What day is it? What day is it? Easter. Easter. Oh, he's so tired. Um, Happy Easter Day! Happy Easter Day! <laughs> Happy Easter Day! Happy Easter Day! Oh, all right, go. Okay, go show dad what you got. That's probably your share. Let's see how many you have. I have four right now. What? Put them in a corner. Put them in a corner. Wait, that's, uh, that's Pierce's pile right there. Pierce is on fire. Pierce is on fire? Wow. Oh, Reese got that one. I see two more. Try to help you, Reese. Oh, they all got it. Just nice like job. More. Let's see how many each person. I have nine. All right, we're gonna share with our brothers, right? Eight. Six. Yeah. You have one. I'll give you one, Reese. That's nice. They all very sweet. Here's good sharing. I think Reese just wants to go back to bed. You guys can open an egg. I have an egg. Open one egg. You excited? Oh yeah, you build it. Wow, the Easter Bunny is stepping it up a notch, isn't he? By the way, only in this boat could we be going 11 knots and do an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> that is impressive, Ultramare. All right, 10 knots. These eggs are very cool. I don't know how to build mine, Mom. Could you look at the pieces? We did a 220-mile uh, day. If we did the entire crossing, 2,900 miles, divided by 220, that would be 13 days. Okay, it's a little dead, so we have a chance all of a sudden to put up the put up the spinnaker and uh, get that back sorted again. See how it goes. Okay, 
Hope that works. We need that sail. Today is day five. Uh, we woke up, we kind of had squalls around us, lots of clouds, uh, really lumpy, confused seas, and not much wind. So the last couple days we've been doing great, 210 mile days, and then right now we're going kind of like six, seven knots. Uh, about 11 knots of true wind, but we have to go downwind, so it's just not enough. Sails are banging around, it's kind of not a very fun day, I wish we were jamming. It shows you how things change. Just an hour ago, he's complaining and moaning, and now, now the winds come up. Pretty good angle, only like 15 degrees off of where we want to go. But we're now in a beam reach and going between 8 and 10 knots. 10, 10 is the goal. There's only 66.67% more to go. Please don't tell me something. That's good. A third? After five days? That's great. 15 days? going crazy. So today was pretty chill, sort of, uh, we're sort of getting into the groove, but what? Elizabeth's making chicken parmesan tonight. So we're actually, we're living pretty nicely in terms of passages. We just kind of cruising along. Kids played some video games. I read them two chapters of Harry Potter. Uh, worked on the computer and trying to get email. Successfully downloaded some emails. It's amazing how the entire day just goes by. So day five, almost in the books. We're gonna have a nice meal, uh, watch a movie, uh, and that's kind of it. And then I do my usual torturous watch where I, on a night like tonight, hopefully there's not much rain, I can actually sleep a little bit, wake up, look around, and we'll see how that goes. Only 10 more days to go. Let's hope. One more drink, one more drink. As we woke up on day six, where are we? Hale didn't even know where he was. But what oh was important God, was, did the tooth fairy come? Who's winning? Me! Me! I'm the only one who's got a guy in the home. Our boys are amazing on passage. They invent thousands of different games to play, some more painful than others but they keep themselves entertained. They're very good friends, and it's a joy to see them invent games along the way. Can I tell you guys a funny story what happened last night? Yeah. So you guys were sleeping here. You hear, you hear this? And all of a sudden you hear this really loud noise. It's bam, 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 bam. And look out here, and there's two flying fish right here on the ground, flopping around, just like this big, really big ones. So I grabbed a napkin, and I grabbed one of them, and I throw him out the window, and guess what he did? What? He flew back in! 
he hit the wind and uh, sailed right back into the boat. I was like, what is happening? Anyway, that was my flying fish story. Don't throw it into the wind. Don't throw it, yes. Never pee into the wind, right? <laughs> yeah, I have stories I need. 12 3 peak. Boat says right now six days, ten hours. What do you think, huh? That'd be nice. So it's uh, about midnight on the 24th. So I think that's our, going into our seventh day. And it's uh, really windy out. This is what I hate, actually. I hate, uh, it's completely dark. You can't see anything. I'm just feeling the waves, feeling the boat pitch up and then surf. We've got two reefs in our main, uh, heavily, heavily reefed Genoa. Um, and we're going nine, 10 knots, easy, surfing down waves up to 11, 12 knots. That's all in spec for this boat, but it just feels really fast in the dark. You can't see anything. There's no clouds, or there's clouds, there's no moon, no stars, pitch dark. All you can do is feel the boat moving and rolling up down a wave and surfing down and surfing down on its side. It's just a really roller coaster y feeling. I just still worry, still get you worried. No matter how many times you have. That is a lot of wind and a lot of speed given how much reefing we have down here. Okay, I don't, I don't know if you can see me or not, but it's now uh, 5 in the morning. I'm sitting up in the helm seat. It's, uh, it's been a really long night. Uh, conditions are the same. Boat action is handling it really well. I probably could have slept, but uh, it just feels like the wrong thing to do on a net like this where you got 23 knots of wind now. 23, 24 knots of wind. And then uh, really confused seas. Actually, I can't wait to see this in daylight because it's going to be very interesting. Um, some really big rollers breaking every now and then. And it's lots of slamming on the boat, even though we have a really high bridge deck. It's, uh, it's still been slamming underneath us. So it's been a very interesting night. I think I'm uh, ready to sign off. We woke up on day seven, halfway there, but to much rougher conditions, and the breakage just continued. Be sure to join us next week when we review everything that went wrong, from broken sails to leaking hatches, and lice. See you then.